Good morning to all friends at uh, the Bangalore International Center assembled here, and also all the friends who have logged into the Zoom session. I really appreciate your interest. At the very outset, you will be wondering why I got interested in spiders. It's a very interesting recall, if I may. Over a decade ago, it happened uh, in uh, South America, a place called Belem do Para. As a UNICEF officer, I was visiting the place and I was treated as a very special guest at a restaurant where I was served a tarantula spider as big as a plate itself for dinner. You think I would eat it? No. At the very outset, I said, I'm sorry. I'm not used to eating spiders. Could I have a lobster instead? It was not difficult for them. They fetched a lobster. The Amazon River, which enters into the ocean, happens just at their Belem do Para. And the very humid climate, the spiders, whatever they grow, they are very huge, very huge. I became interested in knowing about spiders. What's the secret of their survival, their evolution? They have been here for 400 million years. What have they been doing? Well, once I retired from the UN, I returned to India, continued my hobby, and also the observation on spiders. I used to visit Lalbagh looking for spiders, and I continue to do that even today. Even today, I go to Lalbagh every morning with a torch, a camera, a cell phone, and then look for spiders and identify. So a little bit more than just photographing, I'm a good observer as well for the spiders. I'm, I can identify them. I made a few presentations in a few international meetings and also given talks to a few colleges and schools within Karnataka as well. So thank you. Let's uh, go further and see what's more on. Initially doing only photography, but also started making observations. Very often, spiders themselves are more curious than ourselves when we are looking at the spiders. When I retired from the United Nations, from UNICEF, I returned to India and continued my hobby, as well as wildlife photography. Then I also have a habit of going to the Lalbagh Botanical Gardens every morning. Five in the morning, I am there. Many times holding a torch, holding a torch, looking for spider webs, looking for spider webs. Why a torch and why webs? Many spiders construct their webs in the evening, wait for insects to be trapped, grab them, mummify them, and then consume them. If they are not lucky, next morning, they decide whether it's a good place to wait for insects or to go to another place to construct another web. They don't waste the web constructed. They wrap it up and consume it because it's all protein. Nothing gets wasted. It gets to a new place and then starts another web. Well, that's my little introduction to the next few minutes of discussion about the variety of spiders. Spiders have been on our earth for the last 400 million years. What have they been doing? Have they changed at all? Have they adapted to their surroundings? What's the kind of food they depend on? Well, let's try to find out a little bit more on this. If I went into a primary school or to a middle school, ask the children, do you know a spider? They say, yes, sir, it's an insect. Well, I will have to beg to differ and say, sorry, it's not an insect. Insects are different. Spiders are different. How do we differentiate them? 
Insects have only three pairs of legs. Spiders, four pairs of legs. Insects have two compound eyes. Spiders have four pairs of eyes, totally eight eyes. Why do they have so many eyes? Why do they have so many eyes? Then another main difference, if you look at any insect, for instance, a wasp or a honeybee or a butterfly, the body is divided into three parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Spiders have cut it short. They have only two parts. One is called a prosoma or kephalothorax, and the other one is called abdomen. So these are the key differences between an insect and a spider. Little bit more about the spiders. The spiders have mouth parts called as chelicerae in addition to the legs. These are like feelers. These are like feelers or like the antenna themselves. While in the male spider, the tip of the chalicera is swollen, and that's where the sperms are stored. And that's one way to distinguish between a male and a female spider. In addition, all spiders have fangs. Fangs lead inside the body into poison glands or the venom glands, where the venom is secreted. They need this venom to paralyze insects thereafter. Well, to know a little bit even more, whenever we talk of a spider, we think of a spider web. Where does the spider web come from? There is a spider silk. The web is made up of spider silk. Inside the abdomen, there are glands which secrete the silk. This silk inside the body of the spider is in a liquid form, is in a liquid form. Ironically, this liquid is called as dope. I have no idea why people called it as dope, but uh, the word has remained so. Then that liquid is squirted through what are called spinnerets, spinnerets. Every spinneret is a different type, is a different type. So when the liquid comes out of one type, it's for a specific purpose, for making a web. There are at least three types of spinnerets used, and that will be for a flat web with concentric rings and the radials. Sometimes a spider wants only a rope-like structure or a silk, silk thread, which is very strong, which is very strong. And uh, all of you recollect, all of you recollect seeing Spider-Man. And the Spider-Man is hanging from the building. And that thread, which lets him hang on to the building, that thread is very strong, the strongest. This thread has been studied further and related to a steel thread of similar size. This thread is five times stronger than the steel of that size. This is called as the drag line. This is called as the drag line. Now, in the last 400 million years, they have evolved and become better and better. Why? They would like to effectively capture the insects. And sometimes when there is no food, they will have to be deprived of food for a few days. I normally use a macro lens to get a very close up photograph. This, I cannot do it within the garden, Lalbagh, or any forest. I sometimes put them in a, in a small uh, container 
bring them home, use my macro lens, take a good photograph, I don't kill them, then I leave them on the plants. Supposing they forget, leave it for one week, nothing happens, it's still alive. Two weeks, it's still alive. Three weeks, it's still alive. I have a very tiny spider here, in fact, one of the smallest in India, uh, which if I show, I don't think you can uh, even see it. I will talk about it a little later. So this means deprived of food, they can survive for at least three weeks, at least three weeks. Also, they will have to escape from predators. Predators of spiders are the birds and wasps. Also, they have to protect their eggs and offspring. Sometimes they have to carry. Sometimes they have to endure heat, rain, and wind. So they have protection for everything. So based on the kind of evolutionary branches and the results, we have differently looking spiders in different groups spider groups. Let me start with the tarantulas. The tarantulas are more famous among the spiders. Number one, many children get startled. Oh my God, tarantula, oh, very scary. It might kill people. Well, absolutely not. Why is it called tarantula is even more interesting. Historically, historically, there's a town in Italy called Taranta. In that town, there were many spiders of only one kind. When they would bite people, when they would bite people, they would start to shake their hands and legs as if they are doing a dance. By coincidence, the tarantula spider has this kind of a trembling of legs in order to scare away the predators. That dance became known as the Tarantula dance because it came from the town of Tarantula. And that's the name continued even today globally. We call all those spiders as the Tarantula spiders, the big ones. Then the common ones that we see in our gardens, which are busy spinning webs, these are called orb web spiders. There are unique web spiders. They don't construct a web, but when they have their children, the spiderlings, they make a very tiny web. Like we put children in a crib. They put all their spiderlings on that tiny web and never leave that place. Because they take care of the young ones so well, scientists named them nursery web spiders very aptly. Then there are uh, very tiny spiders of the eight eyes, two eyes in the front are very large, like you are looking at a binoculars. They jump 50 times their own body size, 50 times their own body size. These are called jumping spiders and there are many kinds within India as well. And then there are uh, wolf spiders they are called as wolf spiders because they don't construct webs. Then how do they survive? How do they catch an insect? They wait in a burrow like wolves. They all you know, dig a burrow and uh, they are there. They come out and grab an insect, just like a wolf pounding on another animal. So that's why they are called wolf spiders. Then there are the spiders which look exactly like a crab in appearance. You will see them later. They are called crab spiders. Cellar spiders are those which are commonly found in cellars. Number one, we don't use cellars very often. We neglect them. We maybe rarely visit. Those spiders get specialized into dark places. Their webs are not at all attractive and they will have to travel along within within uh, the uh, dark spaces. So they have very long legs. One variety of spider called daddy long legs is one of the types. Then there is a most interesting spider in Sri Lanka called as the bird dung spider. It resembles a bird dung or a bird dropping on a leaf. 
Or insect, when it comes near, it doesn't know. It, it thinks that it is still the bird dropping. And uh, even more strange enough, that spider smells exactly like the bird dropping. And then when the insect comes closer, it opens up two of its eight legs and grabs it. Spiders are also afraid of the enemies. Enemy number one, enemy number one, the birds. Number two, wasps. How do they manage the birds? Well, bird will find any spider palatable as long as it can swallow it. One variety of spider develops spines all over, spines all over. It's called a spiny orb weaver. I have held it in my hand and it was always spiny. These are common in Lalbagh as well. So I found it in Lalbagh. A bird can never swallow it. So as soon as the bird sees this, it rejects. So finally, as a summary, the bird, uh, sorry, the, the spider body is very small. That's very agile, can hide easily, energy saving, meaning it needs less food as well. And it does not waste any food. Well, I'm going to be dwelling a little bit more about a male spider is seen as a good food by the female. Why? Okay, just uh, going back to my South America experience, the largest spider that at least I have seen and it is known, it's a tarantula called Therafosa leblondi, 13 centimeters length, 175 grams in mass, as big as a dinner plate. I have seen it, so I will have to believe it. Smallest spider is called Patu de Gua. It's only 0 0.37 millimeters. The spider I have come with is called Microcantha, and this is only 0 0.5 millimeters as well. So it comes very close to the very small spider. So while I have seen the largest spider in the world, I have not seen the smallest spider, which is uh, present only in Colombia. Also, I have been to Colombia several times. How do we measure the size of a spider? The size is always measured as length, starting from the mouth up to the distal end or the tail end, not the appendages or the legs, no. So this is an example shown here of a crab spider being measured at my home. Then how long do the spiders live? The tarantulas are famous on the average up to 30 years. There is what is called as a trapdoor spider. They are present in India as well, but this particular trapdoor spider was observed for 43 years. So it lived for 43 years. It died because one parasitic wasp laid eggs on it which produced the larvae and started killing the spider, unfortunately. But the spiders that we commonly see around the houses, how long do they live? They live for one to two years. So what are the secrets of their success? Very often we find spiders sticking to the ceiling. How come they don't fall down? In a movie, we see the Spider-Man do the same thing, sticking to the ceiling. The secret being, though they have eight legs, each leg has many appressorial pads or sticky points. These have been numbered and measured. Out of a total of eight legs, there are 624,000 pressure points. You will uh, also notice pressure points in lizards like the house lizard, gecko, can also be sticking to the ceiling. Apart from this, the body hair also has what are called end feet. So all these will help the spider to stay where it is without any gravitational force pulling it down. Now, interestingly enough, I always ask this question, 
all of us are sitting here and those who are on the Zoom, try this. Look at your back just to find out what is there or who is there. You will have to turn your heads around to see what's in your back. Whereas a spider does not have to look back because of the eight eyes, two eyes are looking at the back, two eyes are looking at the front, and the, the remaining eyes on the sides. So totally all the eight eyes are busy at the same time. So that way, I think the spiders are even better evolved than ourselves. Therefore, they have 360 degrees of vision, which we don't have. This is a real uh, spider and the eyes are real here as well. The name of the spider is Olios. The arrow marks point to which direction the eight eyes are looking at. This is a crab spider. It wants to raise its literally head up, keep the eyes at the tip. And that's how you are seeing, this is a macro photograph. I took uh, also at home. You can see at least six eyes here. Uh, the the la two lateral ones are, uh, you know, not visible, but there are totally eight eyes. There are different kinds of eye arrangement, and I don't want to go into the taxonomy of spiders, but the eye arrangement is a diagnostic tool to organize groups of spiders based on eye patterns. This is a jumping spider. Take a look at the eyes closely. The front two eyes almost look like human eyes, almost look like human eyes. The advantage of these two very large eyes, they act just like binoculars. When they would like to jump, grab an insect, they want to make sure they are not jumping on a spider of their own kind. They zoom their sight using these two eyes, just like we use binoculars for bird watching, make sure that it is not another spider, then jump. I say, again, uh, I think glaring front eyes being shown, almost like uh, looking like the sunglasses. And these are the same in jumping spiders. Well, coming to differentiate between a male spider and a female spider, it was very difficult for me as a hobbyist to distinguish between a male spider and a female spider. Oh my God, spiders are very small. How do we know whether it's a male or a female? Coming to a spider called, a garden spider called Lukas Pondé, where I managed to get both the male and the female nearby and uh, took photographs. On the right hand, you see that the female is very large. Secondly, you look at the male on the left side, it is smaller, relatively. Then on the male, the mouth parts are swollen at the tip, very clearly. And those swollen mouth parts, they store the sperms to be used in the mating later on. So that's one good way to distinguish. We will learn later on why small spiders uh, for male side and not uh, the female. The female spider also has a triangular uh, portion hanging down in the abdomen on the ventral side. It is called as an epigyne. It protects the female sex organ. Uh, in this photograph, you see the male sex organs uh, more clearly. I mean, they, they, they're called pedipalps, so they're above the mouth. Now I would like to introduce to you, how do we know how many spiders are there on earth? How many are recorded? How many are known? I think of all uh, the butterflies, insects, etc., and the other animals, we are very lucky. There is what is called as a world spider catalog. Initially started at the American Museum of Natural History which is in the Central Park in New York. And now it is hosted by a similar museum in Bern, Switzerland. 
it is updated literally every second. It is updated literally every second. You can access it. You can access it. According to that, as of 26th of November 2020, which was only two days ago, 128 families of spiders are recognized, of which 4,195 spider genera and with 48,953 species. So very soon, we will end up having at least 50,000 species known to us, where they are, how they look like, where they are distributed. Okay, I have already introduced the tarantulas, the medium sized the garden spiders, basement spiders. And this is what is called as a giant wood spider. Uh, I photographed this at the GKVK campus, GKVK campus in Bangalore, and it's very huge, it's very huge. Sometimes the birds get trapped in its web. Another beautiful spider, jumping spider called uh, Iposilla. This is the daddy long legs, which you commonly find in the basement. It's called Crassopresa leone. As you see, it's hanging upside down. It, it can never fall down. This is a scorpion-like spider called Arachnura. I found this in Lalbog. I think it's a first record for Lalbog as well. Another beautiful spider, always associated uh, with the flowers called Kerotus. This is the male spider. And if you recall the opening slide before, if you recall the opening slide before, there was a, another spider that is the female of the same Kerotus. This is called two-striped jumping spider. I think you know the reason why. This is a crab spider. I don't need to explain why you call it as a crab spider because it looks like one. And very strange about this white spider called Euloborus, very common in your gardens and rarely at home as well. This is a spider that has no venom, no venom at all. So it still has to survive. It uses its four arms to grab a prey called Euloborus. This is called a silver spider called Argyrodus. Earlier, I showed you that at GKVK, I had photographed the giant wood spider, which has a very huge web. Many of these small, shiny, silver-like spiders are hanging on to the web because when the giant wood spider catches a prey and consuming, droplets or small portions of food fall on the net and then these go grab them. Another spider, uh, colorful. Okay, this is the spiny one I had already mentioned. Uh, this spider is called the signature spider. It does a beautiful job making the web, circular web. And after that, it feels very happy, delighted. Well, I am an architect. I need to leave a mark that I made it, nobody else. So it makes four signatures. You can see zigzag white signatures. Technically, these are called stabilimenta. And many, our own architects have said that these will help in the stability of the web. Even though the wind is very strong, it can stay, stay without breaking. This resembles an ant. How do we know it's an ant and are a spider? Because count the number of legs. There are four pairs of legs. Also, it has put out a drag line from the body. So therefore, it is a spider and not an insect. Another spider, gorgeous looking. Another spider, gorgeous looking. This is the tarantula I found in Lalbagh Botanical Gardens. I also held it in my hand. And uh, there was no need to be scared about it at all. And then I left it behind in one of the trees. Another spider. Uh, this is uh, our spider makes beautiful webs. This is another spider which is very active at night. OK, let me come to what is called molting. When spiderlings exist, they're very tiny. They need to grow. But they need protection. So their body 
is covered with a coat which is very thick. But if the body is coated with a thick coating, how can they increase in size? For that reason, they have a capacity once in few months to take out the old coat, grow, and then build another coat. So this is called as ecdysis. Insects also do the same. In the photograph, you will see the old coat being removed and the new ones, the new one being formed. The giant wood spider does the same. Coming to the venom, spiders, almost all of them have venom. Two kinds of venom. One is neurotoxic, that means it can interfere with your nerve impulses, not only yours, but mainly the insects. Also, cytotoxic or necrotoxic venom, which can destroy the cells. There have been many cases of uh, human beings getting a rash after a spider bait. Cells get destroyed there. Cells get destroyed there. They go to doctor. They will not die. There will be allergy. Neurotoxic, neurotoxic, when the spider catches an insect and wants to inject the venom, it wraps it in its own web and then injects the neurotoxic venom to immobilize it. Now, let me go to the next advantage spiders have, the camouflage, hiding to protect themselves. How do they do it? Well, I mean, this is not a way to hide from human beings, but uh, ironically, one of the spiders on the left side is called Arrhenius. The one on the right side is called Argeo. There's a resemblance to a human face in both of them. The one on the right side has been used by the film Spider-Man, and you find exactly a similar simulation in the film. Well, how about I want to move among the green leaves, so let me be green. So this is how Pusetia, a spider, hides, waits for the insects. When an insect comes, it grabs it. Another green spider, another green spider. This spider is used to the bark. So on the tree bark, you, you find it, if you have an eye for it. I found it very difficult to look for it, but once I saw it, then I always keep seeing it in Lalbagh all the time. It's uh, similar. And this is a tarantula. It can be blending with the bark. You can't see it at all. OK, uh, I have talked uh, enough about the jumping spiders. Now, crab spiders, they generally are with the flowers. And who visits the flowers in the morning and in the evening? The honeybees. So they know where to get their food. OK, this is. Uh, Another spider, let me not, uh, spinning webs. Earlier, I talked about uh, a drag line. On the right-hand side, you see an orchard spider with a drag line. And uh, ant-like spider, ant-like spider with two drag lines, two drag lines. And that happened on my finger when I was taking a macro photo. I generally do that. It's very strange looking spider here called Myogramops. It closes all the eight legs. Looks like a stick, bent stick. It does not spin a web. Just a single thread with a sticky end, very sticky end, and it catches insects. Uh, this is a typical web of a orb spider. Uh, okay, let me not... Uh, to, well, in the... Web, it's a common question is asked. If the web is for trapping insects, how come spider, which is always there, is not getting stuck itself? Well, you can, you can uh, here see the spider legs. They know how to tread. All radial lines are not sticky. So spider crawls through them. Concentric rings, they are sticky. How to look at the concentric rings? Here they are. In order to photograph the web intact, I used to go to Lalbog late at night with a torch, sometimes very early in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning with a torch, and you can see them and you can photograph them. 
Okay. And then this is a very astonishing photograph, I should say, where the silk apparatus is squirting and it's open like a shower. It's open like a shower. The spider has got hold of a fire bug, fire bug, which is red in color. I'm trying to shower the sticky silk on it to immobilize it. And it was very difficult to photograph, but anyway, I managed. And this was an exhibition in Taiwan a few years ago. And this is how it did it. You can see the fangs in this very same animal. You can see more clearly the fangs being dug into a caterpillar. Okay, sometimes spiders can grab animals which are much bigger as well, much bigger as well. Okay, uh, there is another strange phenomenon. I mentioned earlier that the web is, web is sometimes consumed when it is not being used. And it happened in front of me one time. Uh, you can uh, see in the sequence of photographs, this spider Aranias is wrapping it up like a blanket, one, two, three, four, and finally it's consuming it. Within four to five minutes, it went and it constructed a new web at some other place. Very rarely, very rarely, spiders do eat another spiders. This is called cannibalism. This is a good example. A lynx spider, lynx spider is attacking, attacking our geop spider. Two striped spider attacks another spider like this. Now, one thing I would like to just say, I think all of you have heard of the black widow. One thing is the name is very scary and you don't know why it's called the black widow. A black widow female is always looking for the male to come and mate. After the mating, it's quite happy. There is no more job for the male. It kills the male. So a woman with a husband gone has to be called a widow. It is black in color and that's why it is called black widow. It's not only black widow, but there are many other spiders who do this. For example, uh, this was uh, in the Banergata National Park. I used to go there just to observe the spiders. The male spider is very big, red legs, and one of the legs, there is the, I'm sorry, the big one is the female. The male is on uh, one of the legs. What it is trying to do, it is trying to spin silk to tie up the legs so that the female is less agile when it does the mating. Okay, now very rarely, very rarely you find that when the insects are not there, some spiders turn to be vegetarian. Here it is, sucking the nectar from a flower. Protecting eggs and egg cases, I have mentioned about this, but I mean, this is a, a cellar spider. There are 60 to 80 eggs in one cluster, more like a ladu. It sticks to this for two weeks by itself. It is not looking for any food. What's the job? To protect the eggs for two weeks. Sometimes they are put under a, a sheet of silk called retreat. And this is another retreat, another retreat, and another uh, cluster or another lot of eggs. This is a crab spider always watching the young ones inside another spider watching. So this is a similar ones. And these are the young ones. So young ones are not let go, they are cared for. These are the very young ones. You find hundreds of young ones. The only thing is they go into the air and they get lost. Survival is only 5%. That's one reason why plenty of spider links are produced. Now, let me uh, not uh, go into too much detail. Finally, I want to assure you that if you are scared of spiders, you should not be. Look at this jumping spider on my fingernail. 
when I take a photograph, I keep it very close, very close, take a photograph. Is it it's only one spider I have done? No. Look at all these. These are my fingernails with different kinds of spiders. They have not bitten me even once. Spiders are very useful at home. Look at a cockroach, for example, being killed by a spider. A lizard being killed by a spider. So we can exploit spiders in pest control as well, and they are being used. Well, I've been sharing all uh, this information just like I did now. There was a photo exhibition at Chitrakala Parishad three years ago, and uh, cine actor Prakash Raj came to inaugurate it. And uh, you know, many times I, I share this everywhere. So finally, I thank uh, you, thank BIC for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, friends, uh, both here as well as in Zoom, thank you all. If you have any questions, I appreciate you could go ahead and ask me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sinapa. Yeah, uh, some of you have asked questions, so I'm going to allow you to talk. And uh, if uh, Elizabeth, if you can start by asking your question. Uh, so I was just asking, how do you photograph spiders? I mean, not aesthetic pictures, but just sometimes I see them, you know, in my garden or plants and I'm just not able to. So. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your question. I think your question was, uh, how do you manage to take photographs, right? Uh, many times when I when I just go to Lalbagh, for instance, or to any other park, I always carry my cell phone, which has a macro option as well in it. That's one. And secondly, I carry a compact uh, Nikon or Canon, uh, you know, attached to my belt. So it's, they, they always uh, go with me. And if I need to take a macro, a real macro, then I, I collect the spider um, in a container, bring it home where I have a very, very big uh, Canon macro lens, uh, you know, E65. I use that, I take uh, a close up photograph using a flash as well. And then I leave the spider. Sometimes I bring the spider back to Lalbog and leave it where it was. I hope I have answered uh, your question, Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, yeah. So I have yeah. another question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, Elizabeth, carry on. Carry on with your question. Yeah. See, uh, so uh, usually, I mean, there are a couple of orb spiders in my garden, but I'm always seeing just one. I don't see a pair. Like I have a signature spider, and you know, the web is very, you know, you can see it, and it's beautiful. But I'm wondering where the, you know, the other <laughs> the mate is, or where it surfaces from. And uh, also every, I mean, last year there was a signature spider. Again, I saw it in the same place. So I'm wondering the eggs are dormant around or how does it resurface? Like, uh, Thank you, Elizabeth. Very, very interesting question. Number one, 90% of the spiders are active at night. So if you really want to look at 90% of the spiders, you will have to really go out at night with a torch. Yeah, that's one. And number two, the signature spider, it prefers to work during daytime as well, you know, because most of the insects that it likes come out during the daytime. But then once the female spider leaves an egg case, it will be heart shaped and um, the, the surface is more like uh, our silk cloth, silk cloth. If it becomes dirty, maybe it may be, you know, dusty brown it can stay there, it can stay there or under a leaf. I'm, I'm talking of the egg case. The egg case is very protective. For three to four months, it stays dormant. And then later on during the rainy season, it starts to liberate the young ones. Thank you. Uh, Satya, will you please unmute yeah. and ask your question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, it's a very hi, nice presentation. Thank and uh, yeah, and uh, my son really enjoyed uh, the presentation. And uh, I would like to ask you if there are any uh, dangerous spiders uh, surrounding us, like or in uh, you know how how do we know if the spider is uh, vicious and uh, we should be cautious about it? Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, Satya, very very good question. Number one, psychologically, people are afraid of spiders thinking that they are venomous, they are venomous. Of course, every spider has some amount of the venom or the other because 
that is their way to catch a prey they are definitely not after human beings they are definitely not after human beings so if they are on a wall don't even touch them but if you, if you do touch them you will get to know that they move away very fast they are not really aggressive they you know so they don't come and uh, uh, bite uh, you at all so i mean that's one way then coming to what are uh, those spiders that uh, we need to look out for the common garden spiders they are not uh, harmful one kind one kind called uh, chirocanthium chirocanthium or clubiona two kinds of spiders also common in bangalore they are called sack spiders because underneath the leaf they find a sack and uh, i mean they they weave a sack and then they lay eggs in it and they are uh, you know hiding inside the sack when they bite when they bite you could get an allergy nobody will die of it you could get an allergy and if there is a spider bite best thing is use a after shave or alcohol rub on it rub on it uh, and then um, may, i don't think you need to go and see a doctor but a antihistamine is good enough thank you uh, yes, sir, yes. Hi, haldar please ask your question he has two three questions Hi. So, uh, my question is, uh, why do the black widows kill the males? Yeah, good question. <laughs> Very good, interesting question as well. One of the reasons as to why the black widows kill the male. Male is very tiny and very small. Number two, not that it is small and the black widow wants to kill it. Black widow is. very philosophical it will think what is the contribution of the male to the next generation meaning the black widow is carrying the eggs eggs will hatch into spiderlings more food the black widow has eaten more healthy will be the spiderlings and where is that food why not eat the male also because that becomes a food that contributes to healthy eggs and the next offspring that's the reason why it eats thank you good observation uh, agastya will you ask your question by unmuting yes i had a question that is it possible to make a is it possible to lead a spider or guide it where you want it to go because often i find spiders in my house in unwanted places even though i i don't mind them being there in my house but i I don't want them in some unwanted places. So, is there a way to guide them out? Well, yeah, sure, it is possible. You could you could uh, catch that uh, spider maybe in an empty matchbox, leave it out in the garden. That's the the best way. But also, let me let me tell you, when you say you don't want the spiders, okay, if you uh, you know start watching the walls and the corners close to the windows. there's one spider which is so tiny but it's always there at home it's called ecobius because it's in the surroundings ecology surroundings and that spider is so tiny but it can catch five mosquitoes per day meaning that's helping you to get rid of the mosquitoes so yes. why you would like to get rid of a very helpful spider actually sir the uh, yeah. my problems are sometimes they are not in places i want them to be but actually how to guide them meaning actually my spiders are mostly small house spiders that uh, that are that are very good at jumping and move very fast and it's very difficult to get them into right. a match box yep okay i mean if you suspect it's a harmful spider put it in a match box guide it and then leave it uh, outside in the garden don't kill it thank you Uh, next, uh, Shalini Satish, if you can ask your question. Shalini, I think you just. Uh, Uncle, thank you for the lovely section. What is section. a good place to see, see spiders in Bangalore? Yeah, sorry, can I have the question repeated, please? Uh, Shalini Satish is asking. Yeah. What is a good place to see spiders in Bangalore, and how do we go about spotting them? Okay, very very good question, Shalini. Start from your home. I mentioned about the cellar spiders. You will definitely have uh, the cellar spider, daddy long legs, 
in your house or in, in your neighbor's house. If you have a small garden, it's not a bad idea to start from your own garden. Observe under the leaves, under the leaves, that's where they're hiding. Many spiders which are very active at night, you will have to use a torch and look for them. But those spiders during daytime, they hide under the leaves. So you will have to literally put up a leaf and uh, see what's underneath it, yeah? But then you are always uh, welcome to Lalbag or to Kaban Park or to Banergata, where you find plenty of spiders. I hope I have answered your question, Shalini. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Shakti Uma. Will you unmute and ask your question, please? Namaste. Namaste. I don't have a picture of a spider to share, neither do I recognize the species that I saw. But in Western Ghats and Wainad, I saw these uh, palm-sized spiders uh, mm -hmm. in the living quarters that we used to live, uh, on the floor sometimes, on the ceilings, and also on the walls, in between the crevices of uh, all our mattresses, palm-sized ones, really big ones. Uh, do I need to be worried about them? Are they venomous or do I just let them be? <laughs> <laughs> they were everywhere, at least six to eight of them in a room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I have been to Vainad myself several times. Uh, uh, also, uh, you know, I can I can correlate and uh, think what spider you are referring to, what spider. Okay. okay. The palm-sized spider, those which you have seen are not tarantulas. No, don't have to be scared of. But okay. they have very long legs and slightly thicker body. Uh, yes, yes. These are called, no, let me finish. These are called oleos. These are called oleos. They are totally harmless to human beings, but then they are so agile that makes you feel, uh, you know, scared. But you don't have to. You don't have to be scared of them. They are totally harmless. They grab cockroaches. They reduce the number of cockroaches at your home. They consume many other pests. Thank you. Uh, the last question is actually from Manmohan Reddy. He has a query. He said uh, he might have missed it because he joined a bit late. Okay. Uh, are there names for spiders in Karnataka and South Indian languages? How are they referred to? Well, Karnataka, Kannada name is Jada. Kannada name is Jada. At one time, I exhibited uh, over uh, 200 spider photographs at Chitrakala Parishad. At Chitrakala Parishad. And in Chitrakala Parishad, they wanted a Kannada name for every spider. So me and my friend, we managed to put a Canada name for every spider as well. You may not find exact uh, equivalent in the reference books, etc., but um, there are, yes. For example, a wolf spider is called as Kalla Kindi Jeda. Kalla Kinda Kindi means, Kalla Kindi is something who is hiding in a burrow. That's the spider. That's the wolf spider. So there are examples like this. Thank you. Uh, we are very grateful that um, Mr. Sinapa took the time and uh, spent uh, the Saturday morning with us and uh, gave us all a lot of uh, information. And I think a lot of us have learned not to be scared of spiders now, hopefully, and we will all put them in matchboxes and not kill them. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir, and uh, we will all see you next time. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, the Bangalore International Center for having, you know, allowed the spiders to come in, and I hope the spiders will stay on here. Thank you, sir.